For the last two months, we've seen silver on quite a bit of a standstill. I do not think those of us who are stacking can even scratch the surface. All of the big businesses and all of the different industries that need silver and make up the overwhelming majority of the global silver demand, I think they've been on a standstill. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and staying safe. Today, I wanted to talk about silver and how I've been noticing that the spot price appears to be on a little bit of a standstill for going on about two months now. But really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also, subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really 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 appreciate it any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below thank you in advance it's more than appreciated but today it is friday the 13th and not only is it friday the 13th it's friday the 13th in 2020 i know they want me to tell you if you're going to go out to wear a mask but screw that i'm almost tempted to tell you to wear a helmet Anyway, today I wanted to talk about silver being on somewhat of a standstill. It has not budged much at all for about two whole months. Now, as we saw towards the middle of September, we saw the spot price drop from $27 down to $24, and it really hasn't moved very much since. It's gone up or down by cents, 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 60 cents at a time but it really hasn't moved too far away from the 24 dollar mark pretty much this entire time sure we saw it peak its head above water and get into the 25 dollar range and then shortly fall back down to the 24 dollar range we saw it drop down to the 23 90s or 23 80s and then it quickly climbed right back up to 24 dollars silver has barely moved in about two months now to be honest with you this was as expected. I don't make predictions because I cannot see the future, but my honest expectation was that silver wasn't going to move very much. And i had been saying it for the last couple of months that I don't think spot price is going to move much at all until the middle or the end of November, the earliest. Now here we are getting into mid-November, so who knows if my honest expectation is going to be correct or if I'm going to be proven wrong, I have no idea. But I was under the impression that we were going to get more clarity on November 3rd. And here we are 10 days later, and it is still a confusing, chaotic mess. We've gotten plenty of updates on plenty of different things. We were given pretty much half the information and the other half is still up in the air, so we still have no idea what's going on. There's still a lot of confusion. There's still a lot of frustration. There's still a lot of uncertainty in all of the markets right now. If you look at the stock market, today it might be all green. Yesterday it was all red. Tomorrow maybe it'll be all red again. It seems to be going back and forth. Up one day, down the next day. Up one day, down the next day. So it's kind of confusing and it's impossible to decipher what's going to happen next or when it's going to happen. Very, very confusing. But I wanted to talk about why I believe silver is on such a standstill right now for the last two months. I mean, like I was just saying, silver has not really budged much at all away from the $24 mark. Many industries this year, as I'm sure many of you know, silver has more than 10,000 different uses. Silver is used all over the place and used so many different fields, industry sectors, it's used in solar panels, medicine, photography, batteries, cars. Silver is used all over the place. And with everything going on this year, many of these factories and facilities and places of production and manufacturing were forced to shut down entirely this year or at the very least reduce production. So what happened when that occurred? we saw spot price tank in March of 2020. It nearly got sliced in half. Even gold got hit by a couple hundred dollars. Gold was down too, but silver from a percentage perspective took way bigger of a hit than gold did. Silver got almost sliced in half. And as soon as that happened, spot price significantly dropped 
And many of us, myself included, maybe you, maybe him, maybe her, those of us who are stacking, many of us went full throttle thinking to ourselves, Look at that. Silver's 50% off. Let me load the boat. And what did we notice? We noticed that even though spot price was down about 50%, we were still paying about the same fiat dollar bill price tag. Now, why was that? It was because premiums did not get cut in half. Premiums about tripled. Doubled, tripled, maybe even quadrupled in some cases, generally speaking. Now, we saw certain pieces of silver with way crazier high premiums than other pieces of silver, which I will get into momentarily. But as soon as that happened, premiums went up. Those of us who are stacking silver, even as a collective, if you get every single one of us and form an army of people who are stacking silver, I don't believe that's even enough to merely scratch the surface when it comes to the spot price of silver. I mean, this channel alone has about 12,000 subscribers. All 12,000 of us, I don't believe, even put a dent, even change spot price by a penny. Now, why is that? Because those of us who are stacking, what are we picking up per month? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 ounces of silver per month for the most part. Now, from an anecdotal perspective, you might be saying, well, I pick up a thousand ounces a month. True, but that's not really representative of what the overwhelming majority of us are picking up per month. Most of us are picking up just a couple handfuls of silver, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 ounces of silver per month, maybe right, right around there, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Point I'm trying to get across is those of us who are only picking up a couple hundred, maybe even a couple thousand ounces of silver cannot compete to these massive industries and organizations, all of these different sectors who are requiring tens of millions of ounces of silver. We're the little guys. We don't matter to them. We don't even scratch the surface, in my opinion and from my perspective. Not a financial advisor, I'm a guy with a camera. However, even though I don't believe we play that big of a role when it comes to the spot price going up and down. I don't think when spot price goes up, it means that more people are stacking. I don't think when spot price goes down, it means people are selling their silver. That's not what I think the case is. I don't think we have any control at all over that. However, I do believe we have a lot of control when it comes to the premiums. And the reason I say this is because you and I, that guy over there, that girl over there, we decide which silver coins, rounds, and bars deserve the highest premiums. See, when it comes to supply and demand, when more people are going for this particular silver bar over that particular silver bar, more people want this one than that one. This one has a higher number of sales. This one is outperforming the other and they can get away with cranking up the premium on this one over here, as opposed to that one over there that isn't as wanted, isn't as desired, isn't as appreciated or respected or trusted or whatever the case may be. And the perfect example I can give, earlier this year, what did we see? When spot price dropped, got practically cut in half, and the premiums went up, they doubled, tripled, quadrupled, we were able to get silver rounds for, I don't know, let's just say $5 over spot, give or take, solid number. But Silver Eagles on a lot of websites, on almost every single website, we were looking at five to 10 to 15 to $20 premiums in some cases. They're both a troy ounce of silver. Before everything fell apart in March of this year, we were able to get either of these two pieces of silver for almost the same price. When I was first starting to stack in late 2017, early 2018, when spot price was about 17 bucks, the premiums for a silver round, 
dollar fifty, two dollars maybe, right around there. Seventeen dollar spot price, and I was able to pick up one of these for about nineteen bucks. Or I could have gotten one of these for maybe about twenty dollars. It was really only a dollar difference. Almost the same fiat dollar bill price tag. But when everything fell apart earlier this year, what's the piece of silver that everybody was gravitating towards? What's the piece of silver that everyone was flocking to? What was the number one best-selling coin? Or piece of silver? Coin round or bar? Wasn't generic rounds. Wasn't sunshine bars. Wasn't the silver kraken or the maple leaf or the kangaroo or the Westminster bar or the silver gold bull bar? or the 90%, it was the Silver Eagle. People in other countries were stocking up on Silver Eagles. This right here is the number one most recognizable pure silver one troy ounce coin on the planet. And everybody knows that. Now it's not superior to other coins because it's more or less pure or weighs more or less than other coins do. It just has the higher level of notoriety. It's trusted, it's respected, it's desired, it's the most sought after coin that there is. And when everything started to fall apart, people started to panic. They didn't know if this was going to lead to an economic disaster, which by the way, kind of did. They didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know what was going to occur. And they were backing up the truck to load up on Silver Eagles. Which is why the premiums on everything went up. Coins, rounds, bars, 90% pure silver didn't matter. Premiums on everything went up. But the Silver Eagles really took off from a premium perspective. Now what were to happen if the shoe was on the other foot? What if nobody was really going full throttle for Silver Eagles? They're just picking up a couple Silver Eagles. But what if for the most part, everyone was going after, let's just say, Silver Buffalo rounds? What if everyone started to say, I've had just about enough of Silver Eagles. I want Silver Buffalo rounds. I want that generic Silver. Give me them Buffaloes. What if everyone started to say that and everyone started to max out their credit cards on silver buffaloes and wiping out all the websites they were all going out of stock because everyone was loading up on silver buffaloes and the silver eagles weren't selling out and the inventory was still there and everybody was demanding and, and pushing for silver buffaloes then we would have seen the premiums on silver buffaloes go through the roof rather than silver eagles now like i've been saying pretty much this whole year I think premiums went up for one reason, but I think they stayed up for a different reason. I'll make this quick because I've said it a couple times. I think premiums went up initially because I have a basic understanding of business continuity. Anybody with a basic understanding of business continuity knows exactly why they cranked up the premiums. Simple. To avoid losing currency. They are a business. They're a company. Their number one objective is to make currency. Their number two objective is to avoid losing currency at all costs. Got to do what you got to do. Was it frustrating? Was it inconvenient for me and for you and for him and for her? Oh, yeah. But guess what? When they see my name pop up that I'm placing an order, when your name pops up that you're placing an order, I promise you, they aren't saying, Oh, look, it's our friend. They're saying, Oh, look, it's our customer. Let's try to get as much cash out of their pocket and into our pocket as humanly possible. They don't see us as their friends. They see us as their customers. They don't care if it makes you upset. They don't care if it makes you cry. They don't care if it's inconvenient, frustrating, life-ruining. doesn't matter. Because guess what? If you say, screw that, I'm not going to pay. 
they'll say, okay, next in line, the next guy will pay, the next girl will pay. So I think that's why premiums went up to begin with. Business continuity. Continue making currency and to avoid losing currency. However, when things started to begin stabilizing, when silver started to make its recovery, when silver got back to where it was before it came crashing down, Many of us were expecting for premiums to lower. Let's go back to normal. That's what a lot of us were expecting, a lot of us were hoping for. But we saw the premiums stay up high and go even higher. The reason for this was because, at least in my opinion, supply and demand. They knew that people were going to place orders and be customers regardless of what price tag they decided to slap on. They knew that I was still going to be converting my dollars. They knew that you were still going to be converting your dollars. They knew that people were still going to be shopping with them. They could have set the premiums way higher than they even did. People would have still converted their dollars, especially the people who just started stacking this year who really didn't know any better. A lot of people were under the impression that they were about to maybe get rich off of their silver, which I would argue is probably the number one mistake you can make. I don't think silver should be looked at as something that will make you money. I think it should be viewed as something that will save you money. That's just my opinion. You might... Agree with me, you might disagree with me. Here's the good news, you don't have to agree with me. But that's why I believe premiums went up originally and stayed up after the fact when silver got back to where it was before it fell back down. Now we're still seeing high premiums. Not nearly as high as we were earlier in the year. I think the hype has settled down a little bit. I think... The excitement has gone away for the people who are looking at silver from a short-term perspective, trying to make a quick buck. I'm pretty sure the majority of those people fizzled out and faded away, which I would say is probably a good thing. I think the people who are prioritizing the long-term wealth preservation, using silver as a hedge against inflation, I'm pretty sure they are all still here. But for the last two months, we've seen silver on quite a bit of a standstill. I do not think that more people or less people converting their dollars into silver is playing a role in that. I do not think those of us who are stacking can even scratch the surface. What I believe is that all of the companies, all of the factories, all of the places of production and manufacturing all of the big businesses and all of the different industries that need silver and make up the overwhelming majority of the global silver demand, I think they've been on a standstill. I think they reduced production or had to lock down altogether because of everything going on. I mean, we saw silver mines shut down. We weren't even digging up silver because the mines were shut down. And the silver that was already dug up, we weren't producing nearly as many coins, rounds, or bars because there was a lot less silver to work with. There wasn't a shortage of silver. There was a shortage of silver being mined and produced. And many of these companies, for example, the jewelry industry, they are the number one biggest player in the global silver demand. Making jewelry, bracelets, necklaces, Earrings, watches. You really think people were buying a whole lot of jewelry this year? I would say probably not. I don't think people were buying much of anything this year. I think this year was probably the year of forced frugality. People didn't know 
what their financial well-being was going to look like next week, next month. Especially the beginning stages of this whole nonsense. I think that's why we're seeing silver on such a standstill right now. Because the big dogs who play the biggest roles in impacting the spot price of silver are still on a bit of a standstill. In my opinion and from my perspective, not a professional, not an expert, not a fortune teller, I'm a guy with a camera. Do your own research, come to your own conclusions and make your own decisions based off of your conclusions, not mine. But I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know. Have you noticed a standstill for when it comes to the precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms, not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller, easier to manage. I'm also doing giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a bunch of different websites. And you can watch all of the YouTube videos commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to subscribe. New videos every single day, 365 days a year. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 2,000 subscribers. Just hit 1,500 and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products, t-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stacken t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin, which, by the way, is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you. It comes out of my pocket, not yours. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know. Number one, have you noticed that silver and gold have been on a little bit of a standstill for roughly about two months now? Do you think that those of us who are stacking silver play much of a role in causing the spot price to go up or the spot price to go down? Do you think that we play a bigger role in the premiums on different coins, rounds, and bars? And also, when it came to my example of silver rounds versus silver eagles and why silver eagles, the premiums went so ridiculously high earlier this year, versus basic generic secondary market silver rounds. Do you think that if the shoe were on the other foot, we would have seen premiums on generic rounds go through the roof and silver eagles would have been laying low? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.